Hello everyone, I am Troj and welcome to... Uh, I don't really have a title for this thing. I'm kind of doing this off the cuff as I just finished watching episode 1 of season 3 of Once Upon a Time. And frankly, I'm not all that impressed with it. I wasn't all that impressed with what I heard about season 2 and season 3 so far in its first episode. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. So if anything, you can call this a farewell to arms or goodbye once upon a time. Now, just to set a little bit of a disclaimer, I will say that I did not see any of Season 2. With the first reason being that I like to power load my series from beginning to end when I really like it. Or if I'm just really bored and I don't want to wait week to week in order to see what happens. I do, however, have a couple friends on Facebook and Tumblr who do love the series and who did follow it from week to week. And as I followed their progress of the show, uh, I found that while there was some good writing in the beginning of the series, that writing has steadily declined as the series continued. Now, some of those same friends watched the premiere episode of Season 3 last night. And after watching it, they've effectively washed their hands of the entire series altogether. Never watch another episode. It piqued my curiosity. Just why would they make that decision? Well, I just finished watching the episode myself, and I can see why they made that decision as this one I'm making right now. I'm not watching any more of Once Upon a Time unless the writing drastically changes for the better. As such, I'm going to show you the points that made me decide not to watch this series anymore, but I'm also going to talk about some of the highlights of this episode that made it watchable in the first place. Again, I gotta say, I never saw season two. I don't know much about this character or what she did then, but I do know she's a black woman in Once Upon a Time. That means it's a death sentence. Whether she was good or bad to begin with. It's an unfortunate recurring theme that literally almost every black character who has any kind of presence in this show is killed off quite quickly. Remember the fairy godmother in season one who is black? Yeah, she gets disintegrated by Mr. Gold, the dark one, rumple steel skin. Sir Lancelot, who was cast as black. Yeah, pff, gone. Gone. And now Tamara, who takes a frigging arrow to the goddamn back. Lies around on the ground, gurgling blood in her lungs for God knows how long until Mr. Gold comes along and then literally has her heart crushed once he has the information from her that he wants. Not good. And for those of you who say that she got what she deserved regardless of her race, I have one question to ask you. Does she cook meth? Does she cook meth? The answer is no. So she sure as hell didn't deserve to have her heart crushed like that by Mr. Gold. This is part of the new Walter White sliding scale sympathetic villainy. For those of you who don't know, Walter White is a chemistry teacher from the show that just ended, Breaking Bad, who decides to cook meth when she finds out that he has cancer in order to provide for his family after he passes away because teacher salaries are just shit and the American healthcare system feels more like a get rich scheme than anything else. The entire show is designed to give sympathy to this good guy who delves into doing bad things for, you know, the right reasons. So if you can have sympathy for him, you can sure as hell have sympathy for someone who doesn't cook crystal meth. Oh, 
my god, this guy is so bland. Why are they giving more screen time to Neil? Focus more on Mulan. Hell, even Robin Hood feels like he's got more character and depth to him than this Neil guy. Oh, so he's the son of the Dark Lord, Rumpelstiltskin? Well, what the fucking do? I want more Mulan. And he keeps on talking about Emma like he's her one true love. He's lying. Look at his clothes. He's from the same world Emma and Snow are from. Emma? Emma Swan, you know her? How do you know her? She's... She's my... I don't know, but she's in danger. I have to get back there. I have to help her. And it actually confused me for a little bit, again, because I never saw the second season, but then I remembered that the writers are trying to actively torpedo the Swan Queen ship. Yeah. Fuck Neo. Go away. I want more Mulan. Near the end of this episode, Emma has given a little speech to everyone, a little Captain America moment, where she's telling them that despite their differences, they should all come together, bring together their skills in order to save Henry and get back the storybook. It's good and all, except for one stupid line. And what's your skill, Savior? I'm a mother, and now I'm also your leader, so either help me get my son back, or get out of the way. Oh, so being a mother is your skill, right? Uh, yeah, guess what, Emma? So is Regina. She's a mom, too. She took Henry in and raised her as her son because he is her son. In fact, do you remember the little speech that she gave you all the way back in episode one of season one? Let's take a quick look at that. Oh. Miss Swan, you made a decision ten years ago. And in the last decade, while you've been... Well, who knows what you've been doing? I've changed every diaper, soothed every fever, endured every tantrum. You may have given birth to him, but he is my son. I was... No, you don't get to speak. You don't get to do anything. You gave up that right when you tossed him away. Frankly, i never seen anything so dismissive of Regina as an adoptive mother. I mean, that is completely ignorant. It's ignorant and it's ugly towards all people who are adoptive parents, who have opened up their homes in order to love for, care for, show kindness and compassion and caring for children who have no homes and no parents, or who have a biological parents who don't want them. And not to mention, is yet another active torpedo aimed directly at the Swan Queen shippers of this show. I've never seen writers hate a pairing so much that they would just fire off shot after shot after shot at them like this. I mean, I don't even think the Wincess ship from Supernatural gets this much hate. Why else could you explain Emma saying something so ignorant towards Regina? Seriously. You're a mother? So is Regina. So between the continued race fail, as well as the writer's continued attempts to sink the Swan Queen ship to the inclusion of this Neo guy, as well as Emma's really ugly, ignorant remarks towards Regina about being a mother being her special skill, I'm done with this show. I don't want it to fail. I want it to be good, but unless something drastic for the better changes, I'm done. Forget it, I'm not watching anymore. I did, however, want to leave off on a good note. And there were a couple of good things about this episode that made me glad I watched it in the first place. The first being Henry's snark. Can they tell you how to get back home after you destroy magic? We don't ask questions. I'm not getting a status light on this thing. Did you check the batteries? What the hell is this? A toy? It's a good thing you guys don't ask any questions. Ah, Henry Snark. Go team, Henry! Because my mom's coming to get me. Both of them. And of course, there's Regina herself, who has more than a few great lines and great moments in this episode. Bitch. Guess what? You'll win her over with your rainbow kisses and unicorn stickers? 
as well as doing the one thing that those of us who have been pulling for the evil queen since this show started for two whole seasons. Oh yeah, she punches Snow White. I cannot imagine how good that must have felt. Sure, Snow White got in the first hit, but as Regina said, Not your best? So frankly, I would say watch the first episode, at least for that bit, and Henry Snark. Other than that, bye series. It's been surreal. I'm Triple J, and that's all I've got left to say. Later.